As part of our series on FX trades, where FX is going to trade light crypto, FX is the new crypto markets. The big reverberations in the deep markets have been so stable for so long, but now the debt game is coming to an end. And with debt ructions becomes relative valuations for countries and the foreign exchange ructions too. We have had these before. FX has been the crypto market before the crypto market in certain events, such as, for example, the Asian crisis of 97 uh, that started actually way back in 96 and ran from here through there that led to this particular HVF structure over here overperforming to its target to a chronic degree and seeing a huge spike in the Korean one from around the 790 levels to just under the 1900 levels. That was epic uh, and that was the Asian crisis and that was the HVF structures that existed before it. I was not trading HVF method on FX markets at that time. Um, then subsequently we had the great financial crisis spike that gave us this uh, spike almost as big as the Asian specific FX mega currency failure event of 96 into 97 which we are saying has possibilities of recurring which we are saying has possibilities of recurring we then had China spending money for everybody in the world from the bottom of the 2009 lows that was a result of the crisis uh, right the way in loading up on debt this was the lows of gold and silver post its run up until eventually we came into 2016 and the shanghai accord when china was hopelessly indebted too like everyone else he had kissed the lepers and become one of them the debt lepers indeed there was a meeting whereby um the world financial heads all got together. It was not known as the Shanghai Accord. It was named by observers such as us as the Shanghai Accord. But it was designed to get China back on track and to deal with the subsequent major credit issues that transpired out of being the only person that was still economically active to any degree and maintaining some level of heat in the global economy post the shocking depression that was the great financial crisis. It was a depression. Depressions run for two years with negative uh, growth in the UK. As I say, they cheated a statistic number so that one quarter actually came in at 0.1. But in actual fact, when you consider that quantitative easing, which was a proliferation tool of debt and uh, many other interest cuts and all other aspects and bank failures, which are features of depressions, all technically occurred and those banks became ward of state in the form of Royal Bank of Scotland, um, Lloyds and many others, you essentially had uh, a depression. Anyway, Shanghai Accord now done. This was the localized high and the first time since the great financial crisis that the Korean won came within a certain spitting distance of the 12 50. The 1250, most of the new normal, this middling level here of orange is in and around the 1150 mark. The 1250, it stayed within the 1250 and the 1050 range. So you've got 1150 that you have been gyrating about since literally 2010 to a varying degree in and around the uh, 10.50 and the uh, 12.50 range. By the way, that green, that dash green line is actually at the 12.48. So 12.50 is on the outside of that. Um, and you had a small uh, spill here of strength, Korean one strength during a dollar weakness for period. But other than that, when I say that overall, we have actually had a sustained period, and I would argue managed period because every major nation elected to do the same things load up on debt and drop interest rates you ended up managing that there was no relative attractiveness for actually engaging in any other currency you were not getting a purchasing power uh, benefit in any of the first world currencies where you would get a higher a significantly higher to a great degree so during this period fx has actually been very stable and the big game has been the equity markets we hear so much about the buy the dip the equity markets the buy the damn dip guys 
it's been the buy that am dip on the bond markets too. That trade, in our view, has changed and died with the death of the debt markets. Now, they haven't died. They've had a major turn. And then they've had a final capitulation in rates. And I don't think they ever go back down there again, in spite of the deflationary shocks that are probably planned for us. Um, bonds are not going to become the asset classes they topped out and made their all-time high in our view. This means debt and relative debt is now far more interesting to people and they are wondering what asset categories they should be in as opposed to those debt instruments. And this brings uh, the overlap of relative indebtedness between nation states and makes this a foreign exchange event. The share for a company is its currency. And as a result, we are focusing today on the macro trade, that is the Korean one, and how it's all gone down with that one. So today or last night on the Sunday session, paying early attention and was watching this because we've been bleeding up. This is a key, key one. Plus, the backdrop has been set with the USD JPY, which we have spoken about and we gave you as a long trade against the dollar, long USD JPY, be short the yen and long the dollar. We have continued to reiterate this and we've said the correct person in the argument between Brent Johnson and Peter Schiff and all the others that are death of the dollar is the death of the dollar will come potentially, but it follows. It follows the others failing first because it has executive privilege. Um, anyway, so let's get into this. We are at the 1250 mark. In fact, we traded 1252. This is the first time since the global financial mega proliferation that took seven trillion of dollars printed and in fact the total number that was just a single event the care act i think it was to varying degrees uh, to actually stop the usd korean one currency from running up 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 and away and making what we considered in this technical environment of the Squeezy, squeezy, Japanesey. Yes, it is all about it. We've had the yen and it's going to go higher. We'll go to the yen next. But this is the, the, the currency we're looking to talk about now. Now, some of you might ask, how do I trade that? In the notes below, I have attached our affiliate link to SimpleFX. You can deposit crypto in there, particularly Bitcoin, and you can trade this. And by the way, in the meantime, cryptos have become a boring, tight, held market. They're small. They're sitting in suspension. Are we doing inflation and we should be pumping? Or are we going to have this major shock of this debt system failing? And are we doing deflation and are we dumping? And it's in a paralyzed state. The FX markets are now setting up the crypto trades. This is the third time. So we return back here. That gives us our RH3. That's big macro stops. This was a feign and break. That is one stage of our five stages of a breakout. You want to find out how we do this and how HVFs typically do do this. They play with the line, step over and pull back, break and feign. And how that technical event dovetails with a huge amount of stimulus being printed up by the Americans in the COVID new reality. And what that led to was the spill, spill, spill of the dollar as those dollars were seeped out as much globally as it went locally as well. And that's what it took, that amount of stimulus to bring you back from what was going to be a runaway gaining momentum market uh, on the USD Korean one. However, we have since bubbled our way back right now and we are dealing in a situation where other nations are not tightening, are not as aggressive, are not as hawkish. You have a dichotomy between the Fed and the rest of the world's central banks where a tightening agenda is being talked about pushed and actually a single quarter point rate has occurred with talk of a 50 and possibly more on the following uh, meeting. Whether that actually transpires and the tightening is just the talk or whether it is actually the walk that gets walked, they will not get particularly far. I do not get them, uh, I do not see them getting rates anywhere through 2.5% before all sorts of things are broken, probably less. The inflation, the cost on inflation has already done immense tightening on the disposable income that is left 
to everyday people. And in fact, they are going to face an absolute earnings recession. There is not money and expenditure out of the retail. They've pushed all the money to the billionaire classes with their inflationary strategy, which is a billionaire enrichment tool because it devalues the debt and pumps the assets that they all hold and own, their companies, their mega real estate portfolios, etc., etc., whilst impoverishing the working poor and the middle classes. So with that game being on, there is going to be a real hyperstagflation environment where you have recessional consumer power, which is deflationary, tied to stubbornly high prices on base commodities uh, and pulling items out the ground. Uh, and, and this is going to be very, very, it's going to be worse than what was experienced by the 70s, in my opinion, and it's going to be associated with the end of the debt-based system. So, this break is the break I think that we stay above and out of what we refer to as our funnel over here in this particular draw and this will then lead to what I will say over here on this trade I got involved early that is my distance to stop this is trading on a much lower time frame a fractal within our funnel and this is how you build your wealth in trading patterns within patterns if only if we actually get to the outcome uh, we hope and there's a lot that will need to transpire and I'm not sure the news is going to be that uh, positive that brings us all about but we're going to probably see further dominance of the dollar especially over the eastern currencies but you would expect this overall currency problem to be reflected against FX emerging as, as well and we see the euro suffering immensely and the dollar dominance coming through much as in the uh, aligned and described in the dollar milkshake theory that uh, was what we saw in the charts and when we heard that theory it was the first time someone gave us a fundamental narrative that seemed to suit what we were seeing technically um, and hence we have been uh, giving them credit for the fundamental narrative but let me tell you the charting is where it comes the charting is where it comes by the way overperformance can and would be expected so the target is 2100 at minimum that is huge we went on real vision and said we expect a, a near halving of the korean one that was in and around the korean one being at these levels at 1150 uh, and a 2300 run would uh, clearly give you a full halvening so we were saying near halvening um, so a run through the 2-1 would be at least 40%, 45% of uh, the buying power lost relative to the dollar for the USD Korean one. This break is a key, key break that nobody is talking about. This draw, we've given this draw count this time. We even said when it broke and feigned back in, before it quit on that break, it was a feign and break. Sometimes it does that, it doesn't always do it. We said over here that Bitcoin the Korean one was going to be the trade of 2019. It didn't turn out because it feigned back in. Mainly because of the dollar killing itself and actually the Bitcoin got the run as the dollar got killed. So we were right about the Bitcoin boon, but we chose to have it against the Korean one on account that the Korean one was going to continue to devalue during that period. But such was the printing. The dollar was the currency that got killed and BTC went up against USD generally against all fiats during that period. That was the first cup gold nugget break that saw it run from the 10,000 levels all the way up to the 64k level that we had also seen coming in the macro technical markets and suggested was going to be here. So fascinating times. Let's go to another key point that is absolutely highlighting why and I keep the, the you know I've got to keep hammering the message home debt markets are in deep deep trouble the HYG we highlighted that you are back at the edge of what is one of the most difficult and uh, really tricky structural levels again this fella we expect to have break to the downside um, this is classic structure we got it right here but again it ran to second inch and who intervened to bail out the debt markets the fed said we'll hold them up well the license to hold them up is no longer being afforded to them in the same way they need to they have to do something different they have to find whole new reasons to intervene and prop a market up like they did here had they not done so 
that capitulation that you saw over there would have continued, in our opinion, all the way to the downside to surpass this target. You are now at the same critical triggering level again. There and there, that was our break. You gapped over the level, but then within, being a fortnightly um, chart, within that same week and the spill taking place and the fall in the debt market, they stood behind it. To not stand behind it would be to allow a lot of debt to fail. This is the fringe debt. This is the garbage garbage. And if that started to uh, fall, you would have had the mainstream, normal, lowly rated debt being re-rated into junk and a lot more would have happened. In short, credit risk is high and the rating agencies are sleeping on the job. There's a whole shelf above this that should be rated. But the, the, the point of bringing this chart up is you had a key level for downside again. They've got to stop this thing here. And they've got a change tack on their hawkishness, which I don't think they got, they're got. they going to do this time. They've got the license to tighten till they break it this time. That's our opinion. And as a result, they're going to let this thing go a little further. But they might try to slow it down or try make it orderly. So there could be a rally at this point at some point. That doesn't mean it's the second. But when we let go of this level, you will see a real downside rating of the debt until they are prepared to intervene and re-put a bid under the high yield market. And until that happens, debt is going to be the core focus, which explains why to so many people the USD JPY and the Euro has been so weak. This was an epic move in the USD JPY, all covered and predicted in our six macro FX trades, the link on YouTube that you can find in this very channel in September of 2021. In short, we told you, you will run 136. So far you got to 128 and you've smashed the second interim. A, a, a likelihood of a possible rest for a while and a pullback. And you got invited in again on the smaller time frame uh, on the USD uh, JPY. These are key trades. This is showing competitive devaluation on account of debt in Japan's case. But what does that do for South Korea's competitive situation and the Chinese yuan? But particularly, I want to focus on the Koreans. Hence, they will be almost uh, competitively, almost willing to uh, do stimulative and debt supportive uh, acts themselves, not drive rates, not be too aggressive on inflation themselves, and to allow their currency to weaken too, which could subsequently become highly disorderly. So the yen's major move, which is incredible statistically after a sustained period in a channel range. You're talking about 2015 uh, when you first jumped onto this ledge way back then and you've been in this range for an extended period. Most of the time in an even tighter square that could be drawn more like this. And the bulk of the time you've been in that range just testing the extremities at most. And that was more in the beginning period. Since then, it has been a non-trading currency. Literally, look at it. You've been up, down, inside the smaller box, up and down. But this was a key moment when it started to fall. Only HVF traders would have spotted this. This is what we do. You can learn and find out how to do this better and more. Hit the link, themarketsniper.com. Book a call, have a chat. It costs nothing. Self-study options are available. If you don't want to um, be interactive, you want a more affordable uh, method of just watching the course materials. We understand it's difficult times. That option is there. It's professionally recorded by me with real slides, examples, and key theory explained. Plus, you will still get the Sunday uh, sessions where you will have um, one of our top guns uh, going through the markets on a Sunday, and you'll be able to attend that. All you have to do is book a call. There's no reason not to start getting better right now. You can build wealth in this reset. It's the best time to be trading the big markets. There are going to be crypto-like moves in the FX markets that are going to shake the world to its very foundations. People haven't understood the severity and the scale of what I'm saying. We made those six macro trades. Everyone is going to happen in my opinion. You've already had the try happen, the ruble happen. Next up was the yen. It's part way there. In fact, it's more finished 
from the move from sub 110 the stop was at 107 you're already at 128 you're looking for 136 it is almost there it's 60 percent plus a potential for overperformance, which we're certain to have and you've got the, the korean one lining up this is a dollar dominance error right now and people can't see it because they all think it's got to die because of the debt it is the executive privilege all the systems wholesale markets euro dollar markets all of these uh, interbank trading things this is only going to be trusted in dollars people aren't going to take the chinese uh, currency they won't they won't like uh, all the um, officiousness the potential communists the locking of funds they trust the dollar in the big system it's taken decades and decades to build from the post-war and this is some of the reason why it has more support than people realize by the way the usd korean one going back to our core chart and trade and why it's going up here i want to show you something on this uh indeed i'm going to split the screen right here and I'm going to show you the Cospi. The Cospi will suffer. The Cospi will suffer, guys. The Cospi will suffer. Why? What is the Cospi, first of all? It is the equity markets index for the Korean one. It is the equity markets for the Korean one. Let's get these arrows under each other here. Uh, and I want to highlight something to you. Now, um, up, 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 up. let's do it like that. There we go. Here we go. Those are now aligned. 94 is in the middle of these two here. Uh, they've gone and done this to me where they make the years not the same. And we got 20. We're roughly, let's get that pulled across. Nineteen eighty seven, nineteen eighty five, nineteen eighty eight, eighty eight. There you go. So what you can see is when the Korean one loses value, in other words, the USD Korean one goes up, your Kospi is in a selling cycle. So not only are you it, so that tells you a lot of the selling will be coming out of the equity market potentially and leaving Korea and going out. That must point to foreign money in the likes of Samsung, etc., etc., uh, companies. Here again, at the, from the low of the USD Korean one to the weakening of the Korean one to here, coincided with the height of the equity market there down to here. There is, as always with equity, an inflationary tra channel of increased value. So in essence, you are doing this. This is the cost and the difference between the currency and the fact that there's inflation. So you're going up while two uh, currencies compared to each other are in a symmetrical uh, state. So let me just highlight that to you. So that sold off big spiker mentals here. Then the slightly smaller ones. This was the events of CV19. You can see the sell off in the equity from the highest point to the lowest point, And that was your run up. That was your run up. And then again, here then in between when the dollar was going down lots of money coming into the equity market huge recovery you ended up going from wait for it let's get a, a reader here for uh, 1459 to very short time hitting a t high of 33 that is a more than doubling it's about 2.25 increase and now you are selling off quite abruptly you're selling off quite abruptly since this was at a low you're starting to go up this is coming down potentially but you're only half the way uh, down in my view i think you can go further still so if we drop into this i want to highlight that this is in fact a continuation pattern that you are seeing in the cospi cospi to the downside gaps to the downside it could already be in a break uh, from running that level or it's a complex second impulse and might go a little bit up but you are seeing a likely continuation to the downside in my humble opinion which would mean that that uh, you are sitting here on a key level as well let's go back and put this one in the same time frame daily that you have just run and broken out here that probably implies that this is already in breakout mode here and you should have been short from that low with a stop over there with expectations of further downside however it's not the cospi that we're trading we are just highlighting that bearishness on 
The Korean index is often associated with lots of value in the currency, which means there's a fair amount of money that's coming out of the equity markets and going back offshore, possibly from whence it comes, foreign investment in their markets. So this points to a larger, great potential loss of value in not just FX emergings, but also in um, Eastern currencies. So other key currencies of the East that one should uh, keep uh, a certain heads up on would be, for example, the Hong Kong dollar, which we feel will not survive this entire process. And has a long-term history, a long-term history um, let's see how much history we get over here. You're not going to get uh, too much. Let me get my uh, other one. Uh, HKD on the Forex side. USD. As we covered not so long ago with my uh, premium community, the Hong Kong dollar uh, is also looking at a major it's going a it's going back up to the top of its range but let's just get the rid of that one i want the one with more history please let's look for it one more time That's the one I wanted. Um, so over here, in our big macro view, we fear that there could be much bigger events afoot for the Hong Kong dollar. And we point to its establishment way back then and its subsequent loss of value during the period of 1982 could possibly have been associated with a handover to China. And then, of course, we feel it can fail substantially again for an extended move. This peg is unlikely to survive the ructions of the US dollar, uh, etc., and they're on low forex reserves. Also, you can follow other people on this topic. So we've got the Hong Kong dollar. It would be rumors not to mention the Taiwan dollar. Less critical, but is likely to run into trouble and see a loss of value relative to the USD. A chip maker such as Taiwan Semiconductors, some good exports, I think fairly uh, logical economic policies that have not been too far out there means it's probably less likely to be the worst affected but may have to get involved in competitive devaluation if it's losing its export advantage to the Japanese, the Koreans and the big elephant in the room that we haven't spoken about yet um, but I don't think will be the biggest loser but will probably do some degree of uh, loss of value the Chinese yuan. So putting that one on you can see that more recently you're just having a little firming up after easing and gaining in strength quite substantially uh, over the dollar we are now seeing a little bit of a turn. Okay uh, so those are the Asian currencies. Korea is uh, my favorite though. Korean one is my favorite and I think the Hong Kong dollar is my backup second and I expect major things to fall. Um, I'm less, uh, I think there will be some level of reaction from the yuan and the Taiwanese dollar but I'm less uh, geared towards trading those. So by the way, bear in mind, this is for entertainment. This is not advice. This is not a recommendation. I may have these trades on. I can tell you I'm in the Korean one and have been for an extended period. I've been in it before only to be broken and feign back and watch it pull back. So FX trading is not for everybody. However, if you assess this has reached the point where the Fed is going to continue to press forward with their plans on an ongoing basis until a lot of things break, we are likely to see the continued strength building on the dollar and real pressures building on other currencies where there are both import nations such as Japan, Korea, etc. And they export finished goods and the input costs are going to go a lot higher in this hyper stagflationary world where there will be a, uh, a recession in earnings, a squeeze uh, consumer that is highly stagflationary 
in a stubbornly increasing inflationary environment given the deglobalization that's happening as a result of various conflicts uh, and sanctions. Okay, guys, that's your Korean one trade. By the way, risk reward on this baby uh, for where we got in um, is 135. 135. That would be great if it happens. Um, it's got a long way to go. It's kind of very much counting chickens before they've had. So that's not my intention, um, but that is exceptional if it lands. And if we get a melt up, boy, oh boy, that will be the trade to uh, ride home about. Plus, overperformance may indeed apply. You can see the spiker mentals that are involved in these structures are huge. It is event driven crises that actually are probability based, predictable for occurring technically. And this is what we do. On balance of probabilities, we make a technical prediction. And as you've already seen, we got false started there. And it is typical for at least once that it can happen. Doesn't tend to happen too many other times though. So if we double back in too deeply again, we might have to review the whole uh, idea behind it. Okay. That's it. Who else has done terribly apart from the yen? That will be a slightly different narrative that falls just outside of the uh, eastern side. Well, we've said to you, you need to be short the euro, particularly against the dollar. And we've included also the Swiss franc in our discussions with that. Further new lows on the euro USD. We said you will have a pause after running your head and shoulder. Who else gave you this head and shoulder break? I've got a whole bunch of people saying your head and shoulders are so terrible. That's a baby draw. That don't work. That won't work. Oh, okay. It won't work. It worked just fine. Thank you very much. Big move up, pause and a sell off. This is going to go sub parity. We told you a long, long time ago. We've reiterated it in September in the six macro trades where we gave you the Euro USD again with the Dixie, which is very similar. The inversion of the one, the inversion, the other largely and the Euro Swiss franc um, as an alternative uh, if you were to get in between performance in the dollar but at the moment the dollar in fear is king in the fear environment the dollar is king so how does this all tie up a little bit of what i did um, with my premium community uh, not so long ago is a little bit of a look uh, we go we went into more detail but the fear trade you can they're going to try push money into the debt markets over there to try stop them from going down so far fear trade into the u.s debt markets. Cash will be king. So during the fiat trade period, the dollar will do well. These currencies are going to lose value. USD Korean won up, USD JPY up, USD Hong Kong into failure. These are key trouble ones. They're on the weak end of the scale. FX emergings are going to run into trouble. The commodity currencies are going to go down because commodities are going to go down, but a little bit less than the FX emergings and the Asian uh, collective. Bitcoin will come under pressure as well if we go full fear from here, as will indices. The high beta tech is the weakest of the weak and will continue to fall if we are in the fear narrative. When the inflation trade element comes back, you'll see money and strength going back into precious metals um, and more of the commodity currencies first are running uh, against the dollar. Right now, we are in this top number one uh, area. So the short debt, long um, commodities trade takes a back seat to the fear trade when deflation and panic is coming in. And you started to see that when you get disorderly declines in the bond market and increases in yield. And we now reached here. A lot of people are going to go tell you to buy debt and treasury bills. Let me tell you in the inflation trade that is not even sitting here. It's right off there. Debt, in my opinion, has turned uh, the cycle. Do not a bond buyer be under any circumstances, even though they may go up for a while. Their position, long run, as the safety trade is long term shifted away, in my opinion. And the guaranteed loss status means many of the money that runs into it will be hot money and very temporary before getting back into the inflation trade. This is a perfect trade setup for precious metals, but they will get cheaper 
during the fear element. But premiums will stretch. They won't get as cheap as the paper price will insinuate. Okay, that's it. A little bit of a heads up for you on the USD Korean one, my favorite, and the calling of a larger, more broadened, potentially, doesn't more larger and potential collapse and sell off of many of the Asian currencies. Don't forget, this could also roll into the Indian rupee. It can also roll into the Pakistan uh, rupee. It can also uh, roll into Indonesian and Philippine currencies as well, likely to cause ructions and uh, chaos, much similar to the original, and let's finish with the chart that brought us here, with the original collapse that occurred in the 96 97 period the asian fx crisis okay thanks for watching remember um, no adverts on this channel we do not get put forward if you wish us to continue putting out content please hit the like button and give us shares in your favorite groups thanks for now and we'll catch you later bye for now